See, the prosecutor is the one who actually sent down the script. Like one of the scripts was whoever the, the person of interest or the target, he made a, a comment about getting fertilizer. So the supervisor tossed it around the table. Well, we know fertilizer me. Well, he must be a Terry. And then I go back and tell him, well, what we need fertilizer for? You brought up fertilizer. And he goes well, to grow things and bring things down. Did this actually happen or is this just a... No, that actually happened, yeah. It's the difference between telling somebody and making a suggestion. The entrapment is if I go and tell him, yo, come on, let's go rob a bank, and you know that was not his intention, that was my intention. So I'm entrapping him. I don't make the suggestions. That was a clip from the new film Terror, the first documentary to follow counterterrorism agent on a mission. It was also won a special jury award for a breakout first feature at Sundance last week. Here with me to talk about the film is director Lyric Carbral. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. So I watched the clip that you guys sent over, and what I thought was so interesting was that, one, he was your next door neighbor. You had no idea. You tracked him down because he contacted you, and you not only got him to speak about the, the work that he was doing, but then the, the, his target ended up speaking to you on camera. Yes. How did you manage that? Very carefully. Yeah. Um, Sort of so because, um, well, I just want to mention that I have a co-director, David Felix Sutcliffe, who was unable to be here today. Mm -hmm. But um, so based on the access that I had to the informant, mm -hmm. um, we sort of were privy to his going on this active case in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And so from the beginning of the investigation, from his perspective, we're sort of learning about what he's doing in town, what he understands his mission from the FBI to be. And we're also hearing all about the target, the person of interest whom he's sort of been assigned to follow. So and this is very much like Homeland, but for real. Yes, show it, it is. It is right. very much like Homeland, um, and it shows sort of the the active workings of the FBI's counterterrorism strategies and tactics that are usually clandestine. So, and that's what I was going to ask. How did you have so much access? And did the FBI actually allow for for this to happen? Like, were they aware that you were filming? Um, to our understanding, we were. Um, the FBI was not aware. Um, our main character, who is the FBI informant, who has worked for the bureau for the past 22 years, he did not tell his FBI superiors that he was allowing a documentary film crew <laughs> to follow him. Mm -hmm. However, the choice that he made to allow um, filmmakers to follow him was sort of based on this relationship that we had had, mm -hmm. which began in 2002 when he was my neighbor. And one of the pieces that uh, that I saw was basically he's saying they basically deserve to go back because they're not being true or honest to the Islam religion. What was your reaction to that? Because I think when you start seeing the, sh when you start, what the, at least the piece that I saw, you actually, you're not sure where, where, his, where he lies across the spectrum. And it made it very clear that he actually respected the religion and was frustrated on the angle that these individuals were, were bringing about. So that's one of the challenges the FBI has in investigating counterterrorism and is within its ranks it does not have many Muslims. Um, and so presumably someone who is Muslim will understand the cultural nuances of the, it can, will be able to separate culture mm -hmm. from the practice of the religion and sort of will be able to go into these communities and have informed discussions. So I think it, it does complicate his portrait that he professes to be Muslim. Um, he did take his Shahada in the 70s. He was part of an Islamic community in New York City that's profiled in the film. Mm -hmm. But I think it does give him a, cer a certain level of culture cultural understanding because he is able to go to Friday prayer and know how to pray. Right. You know, he's able to converse with folks after because he knows the culture. Right. So, and Well, and that's for his work, but he also, yes. he actually understands what, and I think that that's where a lot of folks unfortunately don't, is he understands the Quran and actually yes. believes in its teachings and actually says these individuals are they're defiling it because they are not being true to it. Is that, I mean, is that fair? That's fair. I mean, that is one of, one of his many motivations mm -hmm. that he gives for doing this work is that, yes, these people are making Islam look bad and they have to go. Mm -hmm. And how shocked were you when you found out that he was, your next door neighbor was an FBI informant? Oh, I mean, I Did was, you believe was, him at first when he called you? Did you believe, I mean. I mean, there were, there were like, so I, every informant has a cover mm -hmm. and I met the cover. I met a well-dressed, dapper, you know, conversant individual who every day carried a briefcase and went to work. You know, so that's sort of the person I met. Um, he works for the Legal Aid Society. Mm. So he was very, very engaging. I mean, there were certain things about him. The fact that he had two cell phones, sometimes he would say, excuse me, and like squirrel away and speak in hushed tones. He had copious amounts. He had access to a lot of drugs and cash. <laughs> Interesting. You know, but I just thought this was the way he lived his life. I never would have really put the pieces together. But when he told me, it made sense, but it was a little, it was a little bit of a stretch of the imagination. And how did you convince him? 
because you're a photographer by training. That's basically how you've been able to win awards and go and travel the world is documenting beautiful photography of often marginalized individuals. How are you able to, one, take the leap from convincing him to do a documentary, the first one, to be honest to his story, and at the same time, be honest to what you're trying to, what you were trying to portray. Well, initially, when when I first met him, before he disclosed that he was an informant, I was an active photographer. I was in photojournalism school, and so I took pictures of this man. I don't know why, you know, he <laughs> let me take these pictures. So he wanted to tell his story. Yeah, I think that is that is really what it's always been. He, I mean, he confessed to me. I would have mm -hmm. never known. So I think he always has had a motivation to tell his story. Mm -hmm. He's seeing the landscape. He's looking at books like No Easy Day. He's looking at American Sniper. He's looking at Homeland. He's looked at shows like sleeper cell. I think he really just wants to situate himself in the landscape and sort of inform the American public about the FBI's counterterrorism efforts. And what is he doing now? Is he still with the FBI? Um, to our understanding, the FBI was in communication with him. Um, I would say at the end of the summer is probably the last time we know that they've had a communication with him, but he's currently deactivated, hmm. uh, meaning he's not right. working. And are you still in communications with him? Um, loosely. Okay. So do you think that he will actually support the film? Oh, he's entirely um, supportive of the film. Mm -hmm. um, support in the sense of coming to do Q&As, I'm not quite <laughs> sure, just because of the public reaction. Um, we want to stimulate a dialogue. One of the main things we aim to do is sort of contribute to our, to our democracy. We, we hope that the film contributes to a healthy democracy, and so we don't know that his participation at that level will happen. encourage And so that. where can people catch the film? Where can we watch it? Um, we have support from ITVS and BBC, um, so it will be on public television for PBS in 2016 as well as for BBC. So we have to wait until 2016. We will be at some upcoming festivals. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not at liberty to say because it hasn't been publicly disclosed yet. Okay. Well, but, congratula congratulations on Sundance. Congratulations on telling a story that is not only authentic, but actually having someone that come forward in a way that I think really starts explaining this part of our democracy that most people don't understand. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. No, thank you. All right, that does it for us. Be sure to watch us Changing America every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern, right here on Shift.